Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us at this historic press conference here today. Of course, this fight that we're promoting is Anthony Mundine against right. Sergey Rabchenko. It'll take place on the 12th of November at the High Sense Arena in Melbourne. But we've all come together today with some boxing royalty. Uh, so it's an absolute pleasure, of course, to have Ricky Hatton in the house and also Kostya Zoo coming together for the first time, I believe, since they fought back in 2005. So an honour to have those gentlemen present. But we will talk about the night on the 12th of November and I'll start by talking about the undercard, which is an outstanding group of fights. We've got a couple of those gentlemen up the front here. I'll start by talking just very briefly to the Commonwealth Heavyweight Champion, Lucas Brown, who will be fighting on this card. And plenty will be going along or buying this through main event to have a look at Lucas Brown because he could well be the next big thing in Australian boxing. Lucas, if you could grab a microphone, mate. There are a couple in the middle there, so if you can just pass those along, thanks. We'll start by having a chat to Lucas. Mate, um, you're fighting against a, a fellow who's had a, a hell of a lot more experience. For those who don't know, Lucas's record is 21 and 0 with 18 knockouts, but uh, he's fighting against a guy with 68 fights. How do you overcome that experience? Is it just by stopping him early, do you think? Um, it's basically just, just sticking to the game plan, um, making sure I'm fit enough to go the 12 rounds. Um, I've got a, a good jab and a good right hand, obviously, but I've, I've been working on a few other things in terms of uh, body rips and left hooks and yeah, basically the, the repertoire that I need to be able to sort of take on the world. So we've been working on, on, on those sort of things. So it's just a matter of me being able to sort of stick there for the 12 rounds and, and try as much as I can. And a great opportunity for you on a, such a big stage fighting uh, on an undercard of an Anthony Mundine fight with all these sorts of big names that you see around you today as well. It's a chance to really be noticed, isn't it? 100%, yeah, it's, it's something that I think uh, Australian boxing needs anyways. There's more fights like this to, to get the exposure for you know, people like myself and, and you know, other fighters that are coming up through the ranks. Um, having people like you, you've got Kostya, Ricky, um, Jeff will be there obviously, and stuff like that. So there, there's plenty of names going around here. Just quickly, just tell us your association with Ricky Hatton. He's obviously been very supportive in your career and uh, sees a lot of potential and he's going to be here to see you fight. Uh, basically, just after I won the Australian title, I, I flew over to the UK uh, to see Ricky and have a fight there. Um, he was obviously impressed and we, we signed a promotional deal. So, uh, yeah, basically he, he looks after all the fights in regards to um, the direction I'm heading and all that sort of stuff. So, when I do go over there, we, we work closely <coughs> together. Um, when I'm here in Australia, I work with Jeff. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice little combination we've got going at the moment. Uh, Ricky, if you wouldn't mind grabbing that microphone, mate, I'll just ask you about Lucas Brown. We'll talk about Sergi Rabchenko, who's also in the Ricky Hatton stable in just a moment. He's in the main event against Anthony Mundine. But Lucas Brown, um, obviously, since you've had him, he's, he's been in outstanding form. He's won all these fights. He's still undefeated. Where do you see him going in world boxing? Uh, I think, I most definitely think he's got a world title in him. I am absolutely no doubt. I think he's getting better. I think he's really on the crest now of big, big, big opportunities now. I know he's been probably the top. I've met practically all the <coughs> excuse me, practically all the governing um, governing bodies now, and it's just it's just about next year it's going to happen for, uh, for for Lucas. He's a pleasure to work with. He's an absolute, you know, he's a gentle giant. I call him. You know, I mean, he's so you know, nice and pleasant. But he looks like you know, he, he wouldn't like him taking your your daughter on a date, would you? You know, so. Uh, but no, he's uh, you know, his record speaks for himself. You know, I mean, he's he's, he's an exciting um, addition to the heavyweight division. You know. Knockout puncher, you know, really, really good. And he, next year is going to be Lucas's year. And I, I don't just say this as his promoter and to big him up. I generally, I genuinely, 100% believe he's got a world title in him. Absolutely. Well, Ricky, um, can you tell those who might be considering going to this fight, buying tickets through Ticketaker, watching on main event, what should they expect to see from Lucas Brown when he fights against Chauncey Weller? He's got a, a wealth of experience over him, the other fella, but uh, what do you think Lucas is going to do? Well, to be honest with you, Lucas is improving. I mean, he's, uh, but I, you know, I, it's hard not for me to, to see a to see a knockout. To be honest with you, he's uh, been working very, very strong and very closely with with Jeff Fennick now. Um, before the last fight, they only had a couple of weeks together, and you, Lucas. Now, but now they've had a really a good, solid training camp. Um, and Lucas, you know, it's amazing what Lucas has done and how he's got. You know, we worked very, very hard to get him ranked in the position that he's in. But he's done practically what he's done all his career without a trainer which I think is absolutely astonishing. And I think teaming up with one of the best in Jeff Fennick will be the extra addi you know, addition to the team that will send him over that finishing line and win a world title, yeah. So I'm expecting you know, an even better performance than he has been pr producing lately, yeah. It is a very special day, ladies and gentlemen. We have two absolute legends of world boxing sitting alongside each other. Ricky, is it the first time that you and Kostya have seen each other since 2005? 
Um, it is, yeah, and um, it's certainly a lot less, less painful than it was when I stopped him. Uh, I was absolutely delighted when I heard that cause was uh, was coming. I still believe it was my greatest, my greatest win, greatest night. You know, he's probably one of the best light world toys, you know, of all time. You know, um, and I think um, although I maybe did break a few Australian fans' hearts that night, I think the way that me and Kostya conducted ourselves after the fight, we grabbed the mic, you know, we spoke to each other. You know, in front of the crowd, we spoke to the crowd and addressed the crowd, uh, and I think that's the way. You know, it shows a good positive to our, to our youngsters, you know, coming 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 through the respect, you know, that we we, we had for, uh, for for each other. You know, it was a wonderful fight. It couldn't have been any more physical. Both took a lot of heavy shots, and I think the way we both conducted it, I think mean, that was just as important as the actual fight in, itself. It was still one of my greatest nights, and. Uh, it's been a, going to be an honour to go there to the Australian Boxing Hall of Fame and spend the evening with him. Um, absolutely, he was delighted when he heard he was coming today, and I'm really looking forward to, 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 to the whole day and the evening. Yeah. Kostya, uh, if you could pass the microphone to Kostya. Um, uh, pleasure to have you back in the country. Uh, thanks for joining us today, and congratulations on what is going on tonight. Kostya, what are your thoughts? I guess they're not as fond when you look back on 2005 as what Ricky's are, but what do you remember about that fateful night? Actually, I remember everything because it's a memorable day for me. At least I realized that uh, after that night, actually, that I've got something else in my life, not only boxing. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> um, look, I think what Ricky already said, it's uh, the way we conduct ourselves uh, after the fight. That's probably a good example to the young kids, the young generation. Uh, because what's happening in the ring is one thing. When it finishes, it's completely different. Where, and I was very happy to see him here in my country, and that and know is that uh, actually I did call you when before Mayweather fight. So good that day. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good surprise for you, right? <laughs> I'm happy about myself, what's happened that, uh, again, probably not what I expected, but again, look, this is the life, and I realized that time to move on and uh, see what's, what's next in my life. And I'm, as I said, I'm enjoying myself. Um, this might be a bit from left field, but I know Ricky made a comeback a couple of years ago. Uh, you look like you're in reasonable condition. Any chance we'll see Kostya Zoo, Ricky Hatton too, at some point? I'm sure you could sell out. Somewhere I in Manchester. Very, very good agreement with my mom, uh, who never wants me to see in the ring. That's why it's, uh, I'm not there. I enjoy myself. I've got other things in life and very busy. I live in Moscow now. Uh, it's great. Come to the Moscow and see. <laughs> um, Kostya, I don't know how much you know about Sergey Ravchenko, the Belarusian in the main event who Ricky Hatton promotes. He's fighting against Anthony Mundin, but what do you think will happen in this main event? It is such an important fight for Anthony who joins us today, but what do you think will transpire? I haven't seen the fight, of, uh, but I know what Anthony can do, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a great, great fight. It's, uh, we know each other how long? many, many, many years, even we live in the same suburb. Uh, I know how dedicated and uh, Anthony is, and I'm sure it's going to be a great, great fight. What's the result going to be? It's up to these two fellows. Who wants the most going to win? Most certainly. Well, it is great to have Ricky Hatton and Kosh here. We'll talk to Ricky again in just a moment. Yeah, rather than two of the greatest we've ever seen. And we'll be remiss not to mention that we have Tony Mundine sitting up here as well, and another legend of Australian boxing around the world. Tony Mundine. Now, I mentioned the undercard. We have Sam RC sitting at the very end. If you haven't watched Sam fight before, then do so. He is uh, an outstanding young prospect. Sam, uh, mate, tell us about your progress over the next year or so. What are you hoping to do in boxing and what's going to happen on the 12th? Early next year, uh, we're looking into getting a regional belt. I won the Aussie title uh, February this year, so it's about time I step up uh, to the world stage. Um, this fight out of 12, 
I want to show a lot more aggression, a lot more mongrel. I've already proved that I can box, I can move and jab. I don't need to fight more like a pro, sit down on punches. And I want to fight a lot more combinations. So November 12, that's the main focus for now. If you could just pass the uh, microphone to your left, we have Corey Patterson. You might know him from his NRL days, but he is making his professional boxing taboo. He's a heavyweight fighter, as you can see. He'll be fighting against a fellow called Michael Luatama over four two-minute rounds. Corey, mate, uh, they tell me you're taking the boxing game very, very seriously. Do you see a future in this? Mate, you have to take it seriously. It's, uh, it's a sport where you don't play boxing, you know. Um, I'm putting my all into it. I'm training my backside off and you know, I'm going to give the, the respect, the sport that it deserves and, and you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of uh, great boxers before me and if I didn't take it seriously, I'd be disrespecting them as well. There's been uh, quite a number and there remain a number of NRL players who, who dabble in boxing but you obviously have come over with the thoughts of making this career. How far do you hope to go in the sport? Yeah, I, mean, I want to go as far as I can. Um, I'm not going to say I'm going to do a world title anything tomorrow but you know, I'm going to give my all and see where it takes me. Um, you know, I'm not a rugby league player who, who's dabbling now. I, I consider myself a boxer. Uh, bo uh, rugby league was my in the past, and now boxing's my future. Thank you, Corey Patterson. If you just pass it along, mate, I'll, I'll just ask Brian Amatruda, who's the promoter of this event. Uh, a lot of interest around Australia. I know you've been doing a media tour this week. Uh, it seems that this is a fight, Mundine Rabchenko, with this undercard that has really got people interested. Yeah, it's, it's an enormous fight. Um, the yeah, we're quite confident they'll sell out. Uh, Tyson Serene's twelve thousand people. Uh, that's seventy percent of it sold at the moment, so we're, we're not far off. We're we're quite confident. Uh, it attributes to things of the great fighters on the card. You know, with Anthony and Sergi. You know, um, Anthony, to his credit, and I've said this before, Anthony's always wanted to fight the best fighters, and this is an opportunity. He's an undefeated, hungry fighter on the way up. Um, I thank uh, Ricky Hatton for his. Uh, giving us the opportunity because uh, he could have went, he would have got a, a his world title shot without fighting Anthony. And they've come all the way out here and uh, they're, they're serious, they've come four weeks early. On the other hand, Anthony's uh, serious too. He's went across America, he's trained hard, he's ready to fight. And I think it's going to be, uh, it, it's, it's like a fever pitch in, uh, it's like a grand final in Melbourne. I know we're up here, it's a little bit different, but uh, it's starting to build. But you'll see on the night, uh, the whole of Australia will probably tune in this fight because it's, it's, um, it's a make or break fight, so we're not going to, uh, sure, Coda. Anthony's got to win, uh, or else uh, it'd be, it'd be, the questions of where he goes from there. Rebchenko, he's in the same situation. If he wants to be a contender, he needs to beat guys like Anthony too. So it's a make or break thing. But the undercard is sensational. They're, they're you know, the best fighters in Australia are on this card. The most exciting fighters on Australia. Uh, uh, most exciting fighters are on this card. Um, and I think come uh, come night you'll see a great thing. I'd like to well publicly uh, thank. Uh, Mick Ghetto is next to me, who's the, the major sponsor of uh, Anthony and Lenny's at the Vineyard and a few others. And um, you know, the fight wouldn't go ahead without, uh, without Mick. And well, I can't praise him uh, any more than I already do. He's been fantastic for the sport. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with, and, and I thank Mick for that. And I think if you come along on the night, we'll see. I've got no doubt this is going to be the best, uh, best night of boxing we in Australia have seen for the last 10 years. And I'm and I've put my reputation on that. And I've done 70 odd shows the last um, seven, eight years, and um, this by far is the best one we've ever done. You mentioned Mick Gatto. If you pass the microphone to him, um, uh, here is Anthony Mundine's major sponsor. Mick, uh, gee, it's a big night for Anthony Mundine, isn't it? Uh, and you're obviously right in his corner. It, it is a big night. I don't think Australia quite realises what we've got here. It's probably one of the biggest fights in Australia's history, really, because. If you can get over this hurdle and um, you know we can get someone like Mayweather or Barrios here to Australia to fight for the eliminator what it's for, it'll be the biggest fight in Australia's history. You know, you need the MCG and it'll be beamed all around the world and, and, and put Australia on the world boxing map everywhere. So it gives me great pleasure in being involved at some level. I mean the government have tried to stop me from promoting and whatever and uh, you know as long as I breathe air I'll always be involved at some level. And uh, it's great to be involved at a sponsorship level. Anthony's great to work with. He never complains, never asks for too much. He's really easy going. And uh, I'm proud to sort of be involved with all the boys. And I've had a fair bit to do with uh, Lucas. You know, we promoted him on the James Sony card, and uh, he's a great bloke. And uh, a couple of friends of mine actually picked him early doors. I said he's going to go all the way, this bloke. I hesitated, but 
they were right. And uh, it looks like he's going to go all the way. And, and I wish him all the best. And same as Corey and young, young bloke down the end. I, I wish you all the best. And uh, that's, that's good. And, and uh, it's got to be and the young bloke at the other end, actually. Um, Clive, wish him all the, all the best too. But it, it is one of the best cards uh, that we've had in boxing for a long, long time. And, uh, you know, I really encourage Australia to get behind it uh, on main event um, uh, because it's going to be a big one. Uh, and thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, well let's talk about the main event. It is 12 three minute rounds for the WBC Silver Light Middleweight title. It will make the winner the mandatory to Floyd Mayweather. It is Sergey Rabchenko who's not here today. He is 25 and 0 for those who don't know. With 18 knockouts, he's 28 years of age. He's from Minsk in Belarus and he's been knocking everyone out. He will fight against Anthony the Man Munzeen, having his 53rd fight. He is 46 and 6, 39 years of age. And Anthony, fair to say that this is your last bite of the cherry. This is your chance to finish off your career with a, a run of wins and perhaps another world title. If you lose though, could it be the end of the run? Uh, well, it could be, but you know, with my mindset, I feel when I'm, when I'm mentally there, mentally ready, um, not only Rabchenko, but any other person in that division, you know, I beat, beat well. But I just gotta, you know, that's what I've been focusing on, is get my mentality right, my mental state of mind. The physical, I'm always fit, always work hard, but sometimes mentally I, I don't show up. I show it in a few fights. Um, but, you know, this is do or die, so I, I either turn up or I don't. You know, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do rather than not. Would you say that against Joshua Clotty you did not turn up? And in that case, what's gonna change? Why do you turn up against Sergio Rebchenko? Oh, definitely, but the, at the same time, the Joshua Clotty fight taught me a lot as far as, um, you know, I was getting through with, with uh, I wasn't working or paying attention to detail on, on, on the basics of boxing. You know, I was getting caught with things I'd never get caught with. And um, that, was, that was disappointing. But uh, for this for this particular fight, you know, I've cleaned up my defense. I've worked on a lot of things. Sergio, is a, you know, the power puncher, and he's becoming he's becoming all day Ricky. You know, he was that top fighter, and he, he likes to to try and go for the knockout. So, you know, I got to be smart at times. You know, I'm, I'm a veteran now. I'm, I'm a seasoned fighter. So at times I'm on a fight too. You know, I'm a fighter as well as box. But I got to pick my moments, pick my times, and. Um, you know, do, do, do what I do best at, at, at the best time. Anthony, I think everyone in Australian boxing remembers where they were when they saw Ricky Hatton beat Kosh Zoo back in 2005. Uh, what are your memories of watching that fight? We all despised the result, obviously, but you had to admire what Ricky Hatton did. What were your emotions watching that fight? Uh, you know, obviously I watched it. Um, yeah, I was, you know, obviously I was a bit, you know, I knew Costa, I was close to Costa lived in the same area um, for many years. Um, you know, I knew Ricky was, you know, tenacious, hungry um, fighter. You know, and uh, you know, so credit to, to Ricky for, for dedicating himself. You know, I think they fought like four in the morning on another training or something. Yeah, yeah it's training it's a weird time. So, you know, um, you know, like I said, dedication, hard work pays off. But at the end of the day, um, you know, you need that edge, that edge on the night. And I think, you know, Costa was getting paid good money, big money, and he didn't look like he wanted more than Ricky did that night. Good for you at this stage of your career to have the support of an absolute legend of the spot like Costa Zou, who's come along today. I oh, definitely, you know, Costa, his dad. I see his dad. Um, you know, I've always, I've always respected them. Respect Costa as a fighter, uh, you know, I, I admired him as a fighter and watched him fight and like you, you know, even when I was a, a youngster, Costa fighter, I didn't know, but when he first started out, um, yeah, first started out, he was only a young kid and uh, he fought one of the Aboriginal boys and I was in, I was with my dad, you know, was supporting a brother and um, he told me he's going to send me back to Siberia, but he's still here. Um, Ricky, did you get that out of the microphone, mate? Ricky, <laughs> Ricky um, yeah, you did finish the career of a bloke that we truly love, Kosh Zoo. 
Now you've, you're bringing a, a Belarusian out to potentially do the same to a three-time world champion in Anthony Mundine. What's the fascination with ending the careers of Aussie greats? <laughs> no, it, it's, um, it concerns me, you know, what was, a, what was a, a key fight there and what you mentioned about the Clotty fight, you know, and I think most people see Sergei as being <clears throat> undefeated, a power puncher, and with Anthony coming off his last defeat, I think people have already made their own decisions how the fight is going to go. But I haven't made that we haven't looked at it at that point, you know, you know, a man who's fighting for his career is probably the most dangerous man on earth and that's how we've looked at it. We were, we were prepared for the, we've not come in here thinking, you know, we're coming over there, you know, to, to knock Anthony out, which is what we want to do, but, you know, um, you know, he is fighting for his career and that makes me, as he's tried as Sergei trainer, very, very cautious, you know. Um, but no, I, um, you know, I, I, I am looking over here to come, I think Sergei is the real deal. You know, I, I don't, um, I'm not one of boxing's talkers, you know, if, if you like, you know, I, I very rarely slag anyone off or say a bad word about any, anyone, as of course you will know after, after our fight together. We've got four. But, but we have, uh, we have, we have, we have come in here to do a job and I do think Sergei will, will win, but uh, like, I mean, of course you had that absolute war, you know, we, uh, and then after, you know, you, you, your enemies on the night and then you, you, your friends after, you know, I have a, a great due to me fight with Kostya. Um, I have a great love of, with Australian fights and trying to bring the next champions through for, for Australian boxing in, in Big Lucas over there and Damien Hooper and, and Cameron Hammond and um, so I, I do think in beating Kostya I did gain a lot of Australian fans, you know, I might, I'm, I think I might lose a few <laughs> come, uh, in, 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 a, in a few weeks on the, on the 11th. But um, but no, I mean that's the thing is I think you know the Brits and the Australians we have the rivalry at rugby and the rivalry at cricket but we are you know we are brothers we're both in the Commonwealth you know we've, we've even got the Union Jack on the um, on on the Australian flag you know what I mean so uh, even though we'll be enemies you know on the on fight night which is always the case in, in boxing is uh, after we'll be we'll be we'll become friends and it's as uh, simple as that we have so much respect and it's a very unique. Custom character, Anthony Mundine, to, to perform at the highest level in one sport and then go in and become a world champion in another sport. He's a very, very talented young man, and he is, you know, this probably is a make a break fight for him. Um, Anthony knows that, but you know, we, we know that just as much, Anthony. We, you know, we know we're going to you know, be on top form to, to be, you know, to be that night. I think we will, but you know, uh, and if we do, if I do end another Australian great career. He has had a great career, there's no doubt about that. Anthony, Ricky mentioned the Australian flag, it's got the Union Jack on it, how do you feel about that? Uh, man, you know how I feel. I mean, I just feel that, you know, as our people, as, as tra traditional owners, um, you know, we should be recognised and symbolised on something symbolic as a flag, you know. I just feel that, you know, I can't fly that, man. Um, for that dark history, and I think we need to change the flag in order to, you know, move forward as a multicultural Australia. Anthony, what happens after boxing? Uh, you you make statements like you just made. You obviously think very deeply about not only your people but the Australian people. What is the next step after you finish in, finish in boxing, whenever that may be? After this fight, after after you beat Floyd Mayweather, after whatever it is. Well, I don't know, man. You know. I let it, I'll, I'll cross that, like I said, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But my, my sole focus now is Robchenko. He's a good, young, strong kid. But I just feel I've got the skills and experience and, and seasoning to, to beat him. I'm silly. And may even stop him. Um, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling, um, I don't know, I just feel like I'm 25. But when I'm mentally there, like I said, I'm not, not just Robchenko, but I'll take it anybody and, and give me a hell of a fight. Anthony, do you feel that you have the support of the Australian people going into this fight? There seems to be a, a movement towards getting you home here against the, the visiting fighter. Do you feel that? Well, I hope so. I mean, I mean at the end of the day, I'm, I'm you know, born and bred in Sydney, boy. And, um, you know, I know, like, you know, like some, the media like to perceive me in a certain light and, and divide opinions or whatnot. But, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I'm entitled to my opinion. You know, if you like it, then that's that's your problem, and you have your own opinion. But um, I'm gonna think it and, and and do what I want to do, and that's why every individual is that to be that themselves. And you know, 
that's, that's, how, that's the way it is. All right, Anthony, give us your prediction, mate. How does it end up on the 12th of November? Anthony, the man, Munzine, up against Sergi Rabchenko. What happens? I'm not going you know, to predict anything brash and be stupid, but I truly believe I'm going to win, and I'm going to win, win well, and I'm going to look, you know, like I'm uh, 21. Ricky? Ricky, give us your prediction on behalf of your fighter, Sergi Rabchenko. Well, like, like you said earlier, you know, we're, you know, we're fighting a very dangerous opponent, you know, because it's a bit of a make and break fight for Anthony. So, you know, we're, you know, massive, massively, massively up for it. But, you know, speaking on behalf of Sergey, I, um, I, I'd, I'd like to think that Sergey would win by, by knockout. He's, he's, he's a, you know, humongous, massive puncher. He's, uh, he's the real deal. You know, he, he really, really does it. And he's going to have to be the real deal. You know, I mean, it's one thing me saying that he's got to do it. Um, and, you know, so and so experienced like Anthony Mundine and to be honest I've got a tough ask, you know, with the with the opposition who's you know, Mr Mundine Senior in the in the corner, you know, there's ultimately the fighters to me, but in a twelve round fight tactics can, and game plans can change so often, you know, so I think we've got a, a job to do and, and everything. And when when you got someone as experienced as Anthony Mundine, we've had to come into this with several game plans because if that doesn't work we're gonna try this and if that doesn't work we're gonna try that. So it's uh, well, I do think uh, Sergey will, will come out on top of him, yeah. Okay, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. All of these gentlemen will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Brian, you want to say something, mate? Just finally, um, when we started this uh, promotion, we, we actually went along those lines that may be Anthony's last fight. As the momentum built, what we've uh, changed it from is Anthony is an Australian, and the Australian tradition is we, we, you know, we follow the Australian. We follow him in cricket and I guess the, the English and whatever, and, um, we certainly changed that uh, the whole of our um, momentum in it. It's no longer about let's see Anthony's last fight, or possibly last fight. Now it's about let's see, uh, let's get behind Anthony because he's an Australian. So we we're actually you sort of touched on it. We urge that everybody should get behind him. He's been a, he's been a wonderful uh, Australian. He's controversial, but it's uh, that, that's what makes him what he is. And he's been you know he's the greatest crossover athlete that um, has ever been born. I mean, no man's ever been to the top of two sports. I know. Corey's actually trying it. Corey, you know, you've got a long way to go. To, to, you know, I mean, it's, it's an amazing effort to be. I mean, he was the highest paid uh, athlete in, uh, in rugby league when he, when he left. He, he left at the top, and now he's going to cross another sport, and he's become the top, you know, three time world champion. And he's Australian. I'm saying, you know, let's get behind him. And, um, you know, Ricky's a very dear friend of mine. And, and, um, it's, and I've said this before, it's a shame that there has to be a loser because, uh, you know, we work closely with Hatton and we've got a long future with them and, and, and they're wonderful friends and wonderful uh, they're co-promoters in the show uh, as his boxer, so you know, they're our promoters as well um, and we're going to do a lot of things with them, but there's got to be one loss and as an Australian I say that you know, we, have to, we have to support the Australian and, and I you know, apologise to Ricky for that. But, yeah, um, no, and I hope it's the first one uh, of many promotions that me and the association continues with Brian and Mick you know, two absolute gentlemen, and I hope it's to, I'm trying to win the Australian Champions through and give a little bit back to Australian boxing, and uh, after this show, yeah, we all go on from strength to strength point, yeah. Just on finally, the last thing I'm going to say is, Ricky, we have, we've had a couple of private conversations. we we'll said that if um, if uh, Anthony won, you might come out fighting. Yeah, well, if, if, if Anthony wins, I might fight Anthony. We put that there on. you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to lose a bit of weight, though. Sorry, Ricky, is that, is that a genuine fact you may come out of retirement to find Anthony Mundane should he win this well, one? Let, let's see how he performs if he wins first. <laughs> no, 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 maybe like that one. <laughs> well, there we go. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, these gentlemen will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews for the members of the media. Can we have a round of applause for two absolute legends of the sport who joined us here today? Ricky, happy, and Bossy, two ladies and gentlemen.